In this video, we're going to look at the easiest and fastest way to create a custom walk cycle in iClone. If you're new to iClone, I would suggest that you first check out the different tools that iClone provides to create animations. This is what makes iClone such a unique tool for animation. You have things like Motion Puppet, for example, where you have predefined animations and you can control how the animations are. You can move different sliders and adjust your animation. You have reach target. You have many different tools that will help you animate your character in an easy way, even if you're not a professional animator like myself. And then of course you have the marketplace where you can get already made animations from other users and all those things are going to save you a bunch of time. Now that might come the time where you want to create your own keyframe custom animations. And this is where this video is going to be focusing on. We're going to create a custom walk cycle using keyframes, no mocap data or anything like that. Now I'm going to go through every step on creating a walk cycle, including creating the first pose and introducing you to a plugin that I created that is called Invert Pose. So if you just want to know how to create a walk cycle, you can jump to that section and I'll leave links in the description below so that you can jump to the sections that are more useful for you. So if you do an internet search for walk cycle, you'll find a bunch of images like these ones. They all show you different walk cycles and the different poses that you need to create those walk cycles. So the one that I found that is uh, simplest to, to understand is this one. Okay, so if we look at this walk cycle, uh, it looks like it looks complicated, but it's really not because we really work with just one pose. If you look at this, we have contact, contact, and then contact over here. Now the first contact pose is the same as the last contact pose. It's a cycle, so it will loop continuously, seamlessly. So the middle pose is exactly the same as the first pose, but it's inverted, as you can see here. Passing poses are practically going to be created for us once we have the contact poses in place. Now let's see what that means in practice. So I'm going to go into my content folder here in iClone and I'll go to my avatar uh, se section and I'm just going to choose an avatar here. And I like this curve man, he's a funny guy. So I'll just place my curve man there and he's ready to go. So if I press F3 to bring up my timeline and then I go into modify and one of the first things I like to do is activate foot contact and I'll show you why because if I come here to the motion layer and I grab my hips and let's say I just untick this I grab my hips and I bring my guy down you see that he goes through the floor but with foot contact if I activate it and then I bring him down you see that he, he now has foot contact on the plane now when you select your character if you don't see any animation tracks down here you might want to click on this button object related track when you do so our curve man now shows up and I, and I have my motion layer down here. So this is a motion clip and right now it's empty but if I go into my edit motion layer and I press reset I'll get a key for every part of his body. So like I mentioned before we are going to create this first contact pose. So I'm just gonna hide my timeline for now by pressing F3 because it's not necessary for the time being and we're gonna start doing that pose. So the first thing I want to do is close his hands. As you can see in the image, you have closed hands. Now, this object has spring effects. If you want to get rid of this message, might as well tell you how you can do that. I bring up my timeline again, and I come here to my curve man. Going into motion, uh, actually curve man, and open up my spring track. You can come here to the first frame, go into your Modify tab, go into spring, and you can turn it off if you like. Now, his spring effect, I believe it's mainly for his little head tail there. So I'm going to leave it on. Uh, it's not going to affect the animation in any way. So let's get started. Let's open up our edit motion layer. And the first thing I notice is that on our reference image, uh, this guy has his hands closed. So let's close his hands first. I'm going to activate mirror here so that I don't have to close both hands, I just have to close one and I'm gonna hover this area of the end and start moving my mouse. 
and you can see his hands are now closing. Now for that finger, I can just grab part of that finger like that and I can close it in like that. Okay, so his hands are closed. Not perfect, but they're closed. Now before I start moving his arms and all that, I noticed that there's a, a slight bend on his back, an arched back here. So we're gonna try and create that arch. So for this, it's probably easier to go into FK mode and select one of these bones and start creating that. Notice that when I select this bone, the whole character moves. And this is how I can make him go into position right there. And if I select the hip bone, I can bring his legs to the right position. You can see that in the image, the head is straight. So his head is leaning back because of what we just did. So I'm going to make his head straight. Okay, that's straight enough. Now let's look at the legs. They are overextended right now. And we notice that there's a slight bend on the, the, the right leg here. So in order to get that bend, we can lower our character by selecting his hip here. So if I just lower him, now I get a, a bit of a bend right there. So I, I won't need that mirror turned on any, anymore. So I'll just turn that off. And I'm going to go into FK mode and I'm going to start bringing this right leg back. So if I just bring it back like that so how we have it in the image more and notice that in the image the foot is bent over there so in order to get that we can grab his foot and do that now let's work on the other leg so we're gonna move the other leg forward and we're gonna extend it be, ca be careful not to ex fully extend the leg. Leave, always leave a little bend on it. And then we're going to grab the foot again. And we're going to place that foot almost on the floor. Now let's look at our plane and see if it's really on the floor because on the image is practically touching the floor. So I can go into my IK mode and grab that foot and bring it down a little bit. Now we can start working on the arms. Even though this is a 2D image, we can get a pretty good sense of how we want the arms to be. If we look at the first contact and the second contact pose, you can see how the arm is actually on, uh, on the character. So let's try and recreate that. So I'm going to go into FK mode and I'm going to grab my left upper, uh, actually my right upper arm and I'm going to use an X rotation and bring it just like we see in the image and then I'm gonna grab my right forearm and bend that just like that okay maybe that was a bit too much there so let's bring it back let's look straight at it out and inwards like that okay now let's work on the other arm we know that we have to bring it back just like that and the forearm a little bit more bended like that and perhaps bring it in a little bit okay so now we should have something like the first contact pose now we know that we need the inverted pose of that first contact pose to be our middle pose in our animation and our contact pose, the first one, will be exactly the same as the last one. So let's do that. Let's take care of our last contact pose. So I'll press F3 here to bring up my timeline. And I have selected uh, my animation to be 80 frames. So if I go into my motion track, let me just get rid of this spring track here. If I go into my motion track and my motion layer, if I double click here at frame 80, and I find that 80 is a good range to create a walk cycle. In frame 40, I want an inverted pose. So I'll double click here. And now if I open up my motion layer, you see that I have keyframes for every part of my body. Now in this tutorial, once I start doing the poses, I will be using the invert pose plugin. But if you don't have the invert pose plugin, I want to show you how you can invert a pose in iClone 
natively. And I also want to show you the benefits of having the invert pose plugin. That's why I'm going to time the inversion of a pose using just iClone and then I'm going to show you how much time you can save by using this plugin. So I'm going to start from the bottom up. And if I right click one of these keyframes, you can see that copy is control C. So I'm going to be using hotkeys. So if I copy this keyframe on the right foot and then I go to the left foot, right click that keyframe and I see paste symmetrically is control V. So this is going to paste the right foot on the left foot symmetrically. So if I click on this keyframe and press control C and then click on this keyframe and press control V, I should have a symmetrical paste. Before I start this, and you can look at the, the video time where I'm starting this process and when I'm going to end this process to see how much time we're going to save later on when you use that plugin. So let's start. I'm going to use a stop my stopwatch here on my mobile and you can see the the time in the video so let's let's get started stopwatch okay so click on this keyframe control c and now i go to the left foot control v and you can see that nothing happened now why didn't anything happen i don't know this is something that i clone sometimes uh, is a bit can be a bit buggy which means that actually i have to right click copy and then go to the other keyframe right click and paste now something happened so i'm just going to undo that and now i'm going to stop my stopwatch <laughs> reset it and we're going to have to do it like that right clicking okay so it's going to take a lot more time so let's start my start watch so copy the right foot into the left foot Copy the left foot into the right foot. Okay. Now we do the legs. Copy the right the right leg into the left leg. Copy the left leg into the right leg. Copy the right fingers into the left fingers. Whoops, and something weird happened there. Let's do it again. Copy the right fingers into the left fingers. Left fingers. I said left fingers into the right fingers. Now we're going to copy the right arm into our left arm. Okay, and now by this point we should have an inverted pose, but we don't. Okay, so the arms didn't work very properly, so I'm going to do them again. Okay, now it did. Okay, okay, so now we have a symmetrical pose course there's something that we didn't do and that was the torso and the head for the torso and the head what we need to do is we need to click on that keyframe and we need to invert some values over here okay so if it's three here I want to do a minus three if it's Z 10 here I want to do a minus 10 and I'm, it's actually as my hand selected. Okay, it's my head that I want to. Okay, so I can see that only X is 13. Let's try and... Okay, that's not what we want. No, we want to leave it at default. And let's look at the torso now. And the torso really uh, means all these four bones. Okay, so I, I would have to go through them and see which ones have a Y and Z position that is a bit different so I believe that doing this would fix that pose if I keep going invert these values okay and now this one I think pretty much leave it as that 
and let's see if I go from this one to this one we should have let me just under do this timeline okay I'm gonna stop the watch oh I've stopped it before well anyway it comes about two minutes roughly two minutes that it took me to create these inverted pose so if I look at one and the other let's look in different angles another thing that happened here is look my character is going up so from down is moving up as you can see he's coming off the floor and now I have to go into IK mode grab this area here and bring him down again and then grab his foot and bring him down again and I would never have a perfectly symmetrical pose uh, using this system but yeah you can try that if you don't have the invert, invert pose plugin but in this video I'm gonna use the invert pose plugin and show you how easy it is to go through this process with that plugin so I'm just gonna delete this keyframe altogether so we got the first contact pose going back to our graph the first contact pose and the last contact pose which are exactly the same and we're gonna do the inversion so I go into frame 40 I'll create keyframes here for all the character and I'm gonna go into invert pose and as you can see we took it took two minutes to do that manually so with invert pose it takes less than a second it's just pressing a button so right here we already saved two minutes okay so now we have these two poses that's great so if I come here to frame 20 you can see that the passing pose is practically almost done for us if I look at this and I look at the that's the passing pose and the difference between this and our character is just that the leg on our character is not bent like this one okay but the arms the arms are not too far off we pro we just need to extend them a little bit and we get that passing pose so let's start with the arms then so the first thing I want to do is actually give it a keyframe right here at frame 20 and I'm gonna start moving the arms so that we get to that pose there so first things first I can see in my graph that the arm is back a little bit more than this and it's extended a bit more than this okay for the other arm in my graph I don't even see the other arm so it's gonna be hidden behind the body okay just gotta make sure that we're never gonna touch the body so I'm gonna put it out a little bit the same thing for the other arm and we might have to click twice here to see our gizmo okay so that it doesn't touch the leg when it's passing okay and that's the arms for the passing pose we can look at our reference again here we go it's not too far off and now the leg so we know that the leg is up the right leg here the left foot is fine but the right leg there is up so we're gonna grab that right leg actually if we grab the foot it's probably easier so we're gonna grab the foot there we go foot is like that and it's rotated so in FK mode here we go and it's back a little bit more so let's bring it back and up and rotate it to a more natural pose okay so we're not too far off from our passing pose here notice that the other foot is not really lined up with the head is a bit it's back a bit more so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna go into IK grab the other foot bring it back a bit more than where the head is okay so we got our first passing pose now we want to do our second passing pose which is this pose right here 
And you can see that the second passing pose is an inversion of the first passing pose. So again, we're going to use our plugin. And the first thing we're going to do here is right click, copy, and we're going to go to the middle frame between the other two frames where, where our second pass pose is, and we're going to paste. Okay, of course, we want to invert this, so we're going to use our plugin again. So another two minutes that we're saving, boom, inverted. Okay, so now we have these two passing poses. There's our character already looking like he's moving. Okay, one thing I want to draw your attention to is that you notice that these, these five poses that we have are always on the same level. You can see that the contact, the passing, contact, passing, contact, is always at the same height. It's only on the recoil and the high points that the character changes height. So this is what we're gonna do now. We're gonna do the recoil and the high points. So looking at our first recoil here between our contact and our passing points, it should be around frame 10. So the difference, like we say, like I said, is that it's lower, his hips are lower, so the character comes down a little bit, and his right foot is off the floor. You can see there's no bend in his toes, so the right foot is off the floor. So the first thing we're gonna do is Double click here on the motion layer, so we add the new clip there. We're going to grab our hip, and we're going to bring our hip down. Okay, we can adjust this later if we want to exaggerate this motion. And now we're going to grab that foot, and we're going to bring it off the floor. We're going to go into FK mode and make this a bit more natural. Maybe adjust our hip again here. Okay, right, yeah, I'm happy with that for this tutorial, and now, of course, I want to invert this pose so that I can use it at frame 50 to do the other passing pose. So again, we're going to use the invert plugin again, so we're going to copy this first, go into our frame 50, and paste it right there in frame 50, and we're going to use invert pose again. So another two minutes we're saving here, and now we have this animation going down and back up again. And now here at frame 30 is when we're going to have our eye point. And we're going to do that next. Down. Here's going to where we're going to have the other eye point, the inverted pose of the first eye point. So let's do our high point here. And if we look at our graph, our high point is a bit higher than our passing and contact points. Okay, so let's do that. Let's bring our hip first, create a keyframe here, select our hip, and do our high point. So it's going to be higher up. Maybe that's enough. And another thing that we notice, not just it's not just higher, but this right leg is up here, it's bended, it's ready to give the next step, and his right leg is extended, fully extended. Of course, we're not going to fully extend because this can create problems in our animation, but we are going to extend it as much as we can, and we got this toe uh, creating pressure here to give the give us a step. So let's first look at this right leg, and let's bend that leg, let's grab that foot, move it up, there we go. Let's make it a bit more natural by rotating it. Okay, and the the motion for the other leg is practically done. I just want to perhaps move it a little bit. Again, I don't want to ex fully extend it. I want to have a little bit of a bend there. Okay, so that's our passing point. Not too far off from our reference. We got our, actually, our hang point. Not too far off from my reference. So we got our high point all done. Now we want to invert this pose once again. So we're going to copy, go into frame 70 here, right click and paste. And we're going to use our plugin again and save another two minutes. And we got our inverted pose. Okay, here it goes, our character. 
Okay, so with this looped, I'm going to press play. I'm going to look at the character animation. So notice that his hip is doing a, a little bounce there. And one way you can fix this is by using the curve, the curve editor plugin. That's, anyway, the curve editor plugin is something like $100, and you might not have that. Another way you can fix it is by right clicking, and we know it's the torso that it's influenced here. It's by right clicking uh, the torso and going to transition curve presets, and then you can mess about with these curve presets to create a better a better uh, blend between these two keyframes. As you can see, these are the two keyframes going from this keyframe to this keyframe that we have that, that rotation. Of course, you can also come to this keyframe and you can try to adjust the hip accordingly until you get a good position for it. So uh, using the Invert Pose plugin, uh, not just gonna save you time, but when you're doing your animation and you have to stop your process to create an inverted pose by copying and pasting all those keyframes, that's going to break your animation flow. And the more times you are doing that process of, of inverting keyframe by keyframe, the more boring it begins to get. And you probably get to a point that you just quit the project and you go do something else. So this is why the Invert Post plugin can be so beneficial when doing things like this. Now, we created these poses and we add that result. We can also come here and further enhance our animation by creating in-between frames here on frame 5 and frame 50, frame 25 and frame 35. And we can go and add frames just like we did with the other ones and then invert them to the other side. Okay, and that would be another bunch of minutes that we'd be saving using the Invert Post plugin. So I hope these can get you started creating your own custom uh, walk cycles and run cycles. And of course, I didn't mention that, but if you, instead of walk cycle, if you look for run cycle, you'll find the same thing online. You find a bunch of run cycles and they have a bit of, the, the poses are a bit different. You can also look for jog cycles and because you don't just go from walking to running, you go from walking to jogging and then running. So I hope this helps you out in getting your walk and run cycles and movement cycles and I'll see you in the next video.